Welcome back to the best LED grow lights under $200 series. You guys have been screaming in our comment section that you wanted us to check out this Spider Farmer 1000. So what we did is we pulled out our wallets and we made it happen. Now, we will be giving this light away as usual. However, anybody that's looking to skip ahead, I'm gonna do you a favor. I'm gonna leave some timestamps here off to the side. I'm also gonna leave them down in the description below because some of you guys like skipping ahead. So I'll go ahead and do that for you. Otherwise, you know what all this testing leads up to. It leads up to the leaderboard. Can the Spider Farmer 1000 outrank the Mars TS 1000 or is it just hype? Stick around and you guys will find out soon enough. Hey guys, before we get into the testing, first allow me to take a moment to announce the winners from last episode's Best LED Lights series. First up, we have Alan Joyce. Alan Joyce, you won the HLG 65. And Noah Ballowender, you won the HLG 100 V2. So do us a favor, check your spam box, check your uh, emails, and all the instructions will be in there. We'll ship these out as soon as we receive your information. If you're looking to win this, the Spider Farmer LED light, go ahead and check the description below. There will be instructions for how to apply for the giveaway. Um, getting into last episode, I just wanted to take a moment to really thank you guys for the, uh, the really nice comments you left about my mother. Uh, we went ahead and I, I, I kind of told you guys what was going on with her stage four cancer and stuff. And uh, some of you guys shared some really uh, nice stories. So I appreciate that, especially with things as crazy as they are right now. Uh, it meant a lot to me. And uh, I just wanted to let you guys know I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, a lot of you guys have some very similar stories going on. And uh, I send my thoughts and prayers out to your families as well. With that out of the way, um, let's get into the testing on this light. So for the testing portion, we're going to start with the veg phase. For the veg phase, we went ahead and did a height of 14 inches from the canopy with a center PPFD reading of 624. Now, we used a FLIR and a infrared thermometer in order to gather the temperature readings. However, there was some argument in the last episode that we use black canopy so it absorbs more heat, rightfully so. So what we did was we designed this new board where we put in a little bit of every material that you would be testing and provided all the temperatures for each one of those. Now, we have matte green wood, natural wood, white matte and black matte along with mylar. Each of these we set the uh, emissivity for each to be accurate. So here is, without further ado, the temperature readings for the veg phase canopy using our infrared thermometer. Using the FLIR, we had a high reading of 95 degrees with a low of 78.4. There was no noise. This does not use any fans, anything along those lines. And the cost for the light is as follows. For the day, you're looking at about 15 cents in operation cost. For the week, $1.09. For the month, $4.68, with a draw from the wall of 91.5 watts. The spectrum on this light was a full spectrum as claimed. However, again, we did not see that UV in this light. And there was an argument last episode, I believe in the comment section, that somebody stated that there is no light out there that does UV. That's incorrect. And uh, I'm not trying to point anybody wrong. I don't wanna stir up a bunch of uh, crazy comments below, but I have no control as to what goes on down in that world or that region. Um, but I do want to address the fact that there are LED lights out there that do have UV uh, lights between that 365, 380, 390 um, uh, nanometer range, okay? Aside from that, for the PAR on the, the coverage of this canopy, we could only squeeze about 
at least for the veg phase, about 1.5 to 1.5 feet for effective coverage uh, for that PPFD. So low side, we had about 170. High side being the center was 624. As you guys know, that is not within the reasonable range for veg, so it wouldn't get that three by three foot coverage that it claims on its uh, marketing on Amazon. From there, for the flower phase, we tested the flower phase at the highest point at which we could get the flower in the center uh, for a PPFD reading of 902 at 11 inches. Our FLIR readings were a high side of 103 to 77 low side. And for the materials, we did that same test using five different elements and we had a low side reading of 88.3 with a high side reading of 95.6 using the infrared thermometer. Down at the coverage aspect for this light, for the flowering phase, we can only get about one foot by one foot for this light. So that's ideal for one plant as we know. That's a a lot less or a significant amount less not crazy less than the mars or the hlgs even the hlgs were in comparison far more efficient so by gathering this data looking at our other data the reviews we take a lot of things into consideration when placing these things on our leaderboard keep in mind again this is absolutely unbiased these manufacturers send us their lights some don't like for instance, this one, we had to purchase out of our own pocket, but we still give them all away. We're just looking to provide you guys with as much value as absolutely possible. So uh, when it comes to the leaderboard, unfortunately, this has to be one of the worst LED grow lights we've tested to date. Um, we're gonna place this at the bottom. It's not to say you can't use it, it is usable for some applications. However, for medicinal plants, we don't quite suggest the value here or for tomatoes or for uh, large blooming flowering plants. If you did one plant at max, and this isn't gonna be a very tall plant, keep that in mind. So uh, we are now launching a new pro series uh, LED review, and we will have that out in about a week or two. Please be patient as you guys know, we do uh, run a full uh, horticulture college in downtown Orlando. It's about 3,500 square feet where we specialize in both medicinal plants and standard horticulture plants. For that, we really look forward to you guys leaving some comments below. Let us know what lights you want to see tested. Let us know how these lights have affected you or, you know, just a what's up. Do a like and a subscribe per usual, and we will see you guys next time on best LED grow lights under $200. Take care, guys.